Thank you very much. That concludes topical questions. And we turn now uh, to a statement by Shona Robertson on NHS Tayside. And the Cabinet Secretary will, of course, take questions after her statement. So I would encourage all members who wish to ask a question to press their request to speak buttons now. <clears throat> and I call on Shona Robertson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I'd like to update the Chamber on developments in NHS Tayside over the Easter recess. On Friday the 6th of April, I exercised powers under the National Health Service Scotland Act 1978 and instructed that Paul Gray, as Chief Executive of NHS Scotland, take immediate action to strengthen the leadership of NHS Tayside. The decision to exercise these powers was not one I took lightly and was the result of a series of issues which have come to light in relation to the management of NHS Tayside over recent months. As Parliament will be aware, since 2012-13, NHS Tayside has required brokerage funding from the Scottish Government to balance its annual financial position. The level of brokerage awarded each year has risen, and the amount of brokerage outstanding now totals £45.3 million, excluding the repayment of endowment funds, which will be added this year. In recognition of the need for action to tackle the rising deficit, NHS Tayside developed a five-year transformation programme launched in 2015-16 with the twin aim of improving patient experience alongside achieving financial sustainability. To support this programme in May 2016, we put in place arrangements to provide tailored support to NHS Tayside. By its very nature, the scale of change envisaged was not a quick fix. However, by the end of 2016-17, it was clear that the year one milestones in their plan were not going to be delivered and the board required a further £13.2 million of brokerage. In response, in March 2017, we appointed Professor Sir Lewis Ritchie to chair an assurance and advisory group, the AAG, to review the deliverability of the board's plans and the associated financial projections. On the 27th of June 2017, the AAG published their staging report, confirming the financial picture being forecast by the board was unrealistic. They also highlighted issues in relation to the board's vision for the future, its service and workforce planning, its prescribing activities, as well as its leadership and governance processes. Upon receipt of these, these findings, we established a transformation support team led by Caroline Lamb, Chief Executive of NHS Education for Scotland, to provide support and constructive challenge to the senior management of NHS Tayside. The transformation support team provided intensive input into the executive team from July to December 2017. The AAG's second progress report was submitted earlier this year and sent to Parliament on the 23rd of February. In this latest report, the expert team recognised that while progress had been made, it was largely transactional as opposed to transformational. Just days after the publication of that second progress report, an issue was uncovered by the Scottish Government officials and brought to my attention on how e-health funding had been recorded in the NHS Tayside accounts. We commissioned an independent investigation from Grant Thornton UK into this issue, which has been shared with Parliament. The central problem this highlighted was that the level of the board's deficit had been understated over a period of years. NHS Tayside's Director of Finance subsequently took the decision to retire and immediate steps were taken to strengthen the financial controls of all the organisations involved. This includes the withdrawal from eHealth leads of the ability to make financial decisions and a review of internal controls in NHS National Services Scotland. On the 3rd of April, the then NHS Tayside Chair highlighted claims to me that on the 24th of January 2014, a decision was taken by the Board of Trustees responsible for endowment funds, which had resulted in a number of projects being retrospectively approved for charitable funding, when they'd already been approved for funding through core NHS resources. I immediately took action to have the accuracy of these claims independently verified. Following on from their work on e-health funding, Grant Thornton were commissioned to undertake a review of NHS Tayside's financial governance. This work has now been extended to cover the use of endowment funds. Given the significance of these issues, the review will now report to the Scottish Government. NHS Scotland Chief Executive Paul Gray wrote to all NHS Board Chairs on the 5th of April to seek their explicit assurance by the end of this month 
that all charitable funds have been used appropriately. The Office of the, the, Office of the Scottish Charities Regulator have recently opened a formal inquiry into the allegations of possible misconduct in the operation of Tayside's endowment fund. Once I have received assurances from all other health boards, I'll share their, those assurances with Oscar, who have agreed to review them. Should they determine that spending of endowment funds by any board was inappropriate, then I expect it to be paid back swiftly and in full. In responding to such events, the maintenance of public confidence in the health service in Scotland is of paramount importance. The credibility of the board's updated reform plans, as well as public confidence in the board's leadership and in donating funds for the benefit of the health service, were significantly undermined by these events. The NHS Tayside Chief Executive's attendance at the endowment fund meetings in 2014, particularly in the, Jan in the January where decisions were made on the use of charitable funds for retrospective expenditure, raised serious concerns. Although the chair was not in post at that time of these decisions, the culmination of financial control issues, along with the limited progress highlighted by the AAG, led me to the conclusion that real change was going to require a new leadership team with a robust set of skills to restore public confidence in NHS Tayside. And that's why I exercised my ministerial powers of intervention and asked Paul Gray, as Chief Executive of NHS Scotland, to strengthen management at NHS Tayside with immediate effect. The Chair, Professor John Connell, tendered his resignation on the 6th of April, and I thank him for his service to the Board over the last two and a half years. Leslie Maclay is currently on sick leave, and the role of Accountable Officer has been transferred to the new Chief Executive, Malcolm Wright. It is not possible to comment further on Ms Maclay's employment position at this time. It's crucially important that the new leadership team at NHS Tayside is strong and experienced, which is why I've appointed John Brown CBE as the new chair. Mr. Brown already chairs a large health board and is a chartered management accountant with significant experience in leading change. I've also approved the appointment of Malcolm Wright OBE as chief executive. Mr. Wright is a very experienced NHS chief executive and has already been involved in a number of successful board transformations. They've both started as they mean to go on, with productive meetings already held with the rest of the board and with the chief executives of all three local authorities to underscore the importance of collaborative working in designing and delivering health and care services for the people of Tayside. Another priority has been to ensure that all staff in Tayside are cited on developments with an all staff briefing issued immediately on the new leadership team taking up posts. In relation to the issue of endowment funds, an emergency board meeting held last week agreed to a proposal presented by Mr Brown and Mr Wright to repay in full the endowment money which had been retrospectively applied to programmes of work in 2014. Understandably, stabilising the board will take some time and I'm committed to ensuring the Scottish Government continues to support NHS Tayside with financial brokerage, with repayment currently suspended for a three-year period to provide <coughs> breathing space for the board to focus on achieving stability and to plan properly for change. I've also agreed that the brokerage be increased to cover the repayment of endowment <coughs> funds that have been inappropriately used. It's crucially important that the quality of patient services is protected and maintained throughout this challenging time. The staff of NHS Tayside have much to be proud of. A reputation for good, safe, person-centred and effective care, with many examples of innovation and good practice recognised across the country. I met with the board alongside its new leadership on the 9th of April and it's clear that there remains a real appetite within the board to drive forward positively, underpinned by clinically driven change initiatives. I've been clear with the new leadership that their priorities must be to steady the ship, provide clarity on where the organisation is going and to take the public and the staff of NHS Tayside with them throughout that process. I have every confidence in John Brown and Malcolm Wright that they will deliver this. I look forward to seeing NHS Tayside reach its full potential and become the organisation that the staff and people of Tayside deserve. Alongside the work ongoing in NHS Tayside, we'll also see the completion of the Grant Thornton review of Tayside's existing financial controls, including the use of endowment funds. Oscar will complete their own consideration of the behaviour of the Tayside Endowment Fund Board of Trustees in early 2014, along with their oversight of activities elsewhere in NHS Scotland, with any funding considered to be inappropriate being immediately returned to the endowment funds. 
Presiding officer, I will ensure all reports are made available to Parliament once completed and all recommendations from these reports are implemented. I'm happy to take questions. Thank you very much. Anna Colin, Miles Briggs. Thank you, presiding officer. The public in Tayside and across Scotland have been rightly shocked and angered at the use of charitable funds by NHS Tayside to help pay for NHS board projects. And in her statement, the Cabinet Secretary references the independent review by Grant Thornton on e-health funding between e-health, NHS National Services Scotland and NHS Tayside between 2012 and 2018, which did indeed raise many very serious issues. The Cabinet Secretary, for some, re for some reason, has not, though, mentioned the repeated failures of oversight within her own department over this period, which were clearly identified within that the review. How will the Cabinet Secretary ensure that lessons are learnt from this so that the Cabinet Secretary and her officials will in future provide the proper level of scrutiny and supervision that must be provided in relation to the use of taxpayers' money? And in light of the concerns that other NHS boards may have also been using charitable funds in a similar way, does the Cabinet Secretary not agree that an independent, broader inquiry into the extent of this practice across Scotland is now needed? One that's able to make clear recommendations about how to prevent this happening again in the future. And does the Cabinet Secretary not agree that that would be the best way to restore public confidence, something which is now absolutely vital? The Cabinet Secretary also says that it's time to steady the ship. We've been raising these concerns for some time in Parliament, and I think it's quite clear that for too long, NHS Tayside's leadership has been sinking under the leadership of this government. And is it not now time to act, and for this whole Parliament to have a role in supervising the finances of our health boards? Cabinet Secretary. Well, Parliament, of course, does have a role. That's why we have an audit committee which is looking in uh, to these matters, and that's quite right and proper. I've also said at the end of my statement that I'll make available all of these reports to Parliament um, in the, the, so that we can be open and transparent about these matters. Um, I went through in some detail in my statement all of the support that's been given to NHS Tayside. So I don't think it's fair to say that the Scottish Government has not tried in its endeavours to support NHS Tayside. Over the years, we have given extensive support uh, to that board. I laid that out in some detail in my statement, but it reached a position after all of that, particularly in the light of the e-health and the endowment funds issues uh, arising, that the conclusion that we reached was that what was required was a new leadership team at the top of NHS Tayside to take the organisation forward. That is not something I did lightly, as I said in my statement. Miles Briggs also talked about um, the a need for independent oversight of the issue of endowment funds. Oscar is independent. That's why we've asked them to look at all of the returns that will come from boards. And at the moment, there is nothing to suggest that other boards or the endowment funds of other boards have been used in a way that Tayside used theirs. There's nothing to suggest that. However, what's important is that Oscar looks at all of that. They are independent. And I think as the charity regulator, they are the, the organisation that is best placed to oversee that. I should point out that endowment funds are also separate from um, ministers, and ministers have no role over the, the issues of endowment funds. So it's important, therefore, that Oscar are the body that looks and has oversight uh, into uh, those funds. Once all of that is completed, then we'll make sure, as I'm sure Oscar will, that all of that information is put into the public domain. Thank you, I call Anas Sarwar to be followed by Graham D. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for prior sight of the statement. I note that she said in her statement that NHS Tayside needs new leadership and their priority must be to steady the ship, provide clarity and take the public and NHS staff with them. The leadership of our NHS Cabinet Secretary is you. Yes. You have let down NHS staff. Yeah. You have failed yeah. too many patients. You have breached the trust of the public and this has happened on your watch in your local health board. This is your mismanagement and your failure. The sad reality is that the public have lost confidence in this public cabinet secretary, and this cabinet secretary has lost control of her brief. Therefore, will the cabinet secretary do the decent thing and at the very least withdraw herself from this investigation, if not withdraw herself from this portfolio altogether? Cabinet Secretary. Um, I think 
Anna Sarwar failed to mention that he agreed with the decision to remove the leadership team of NHS Tayside and, and uh, replace them with a new leadership team. Um, I think uh, he, he, uh, he didn't uh, mention that fact, which is important, and I'm glad that he supported my decision. I think in all of that, there was a question about uh, the investigation. I don't know if he listened to my statement or indeed the answer I gave to Miles Briggs. I think I was very clear that Oscar are leading this investigation. Now, if Anna Sauer is suggesting somehow Oscar is not independent and are not capable of leading the investigation, then I think that is uh, very unfortunate indeed. Oscar, as a charity regulator, are the best people to look at whether these funds, these endowment funds, have been appropriately used or not. That, Rosa, that is how that process will be taken forward. The external audit of boards will also have a look at endowment funds. That will also be taken forward. So by the end of this month, uh, we will have the returns from boards. By the end of May, Oscar will give us an initial view on those returns and they will take any appropriate action thereafter. And by the end of June, the external uh, audits will have taken place with a particular look at endowment funds. I would have thought in anybody's eyes, that is a robust process with the independence of Oscar at its heart. Graham D to be followed by Liz Smith. Graham D. Thank you. Can I ask the Cabinet Secretary if she agrees with me that the change of senior management must also lead to a cultural change at the top of the organisation, not least ensuring that the financial challenges that have been highlighted do not adversely affect the provision of services for patients in rural se settings such as those I, John Swinney and Marie Goujon represent? Cabinet Secretary. Well, um, can I say to Graham Day, I've been absolutely clear that the financial challenges facing NHS Tayside mustn't affect the, the quality of services being provided to patients. I've said that in a statement, I've said that previously, including to those in uh, rural settings. And that's why I've made a commitment to continue to provide brokerage to NHS Tayside. And it's why the, the repayment of brokerage is currently suspended to enable the board to focus on getting back on track. I think that's important. I think the new leadership team has already signalled that the quality of care will remain a, a key priority for the board. In both their words and their actions have already underlined the importance of a culture of honesty and openness and of engagement with staff at all levels. I think they have signalled a, a new culture and a new approach and they should be given the time to get on with the job. Liz Smith to be followed by Jenny Mara. Liz Smith. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. Cabinet Secretary, in reply to a constituent of mine, Oscar has stated that it did not become aware of the alleged issues regarding the use of NHS Tayside's assets until the media reports appeared on the 4th of April. Now, can I ask the Cabinet Secretary if, whether during the period 2014 to 2018, the Scottish Government had any communications whatsoever with Oscar about the use of NHS Tayside funds, given that a key role for Oscar is to review the charity's accounts? Cabinet Secretary. This is a, an important issue and Oscar will be looking into all of this because bearing in mind that they're doing a specific investigation into the endowment issue of NHS Tayside and it's right and proper that they do that. What I can tell Liz Smith that in the return from NHS Tayside on the 17th of June 2014 from the Audit and Risk Committee, there was no significant issues raised, that they were given a clean audit opinion and this issue wasn't escalated to the Scottish Government as a matter of concern at the time by either internal or external auditors. Um, now, I think there are issues there in terms of the reviews that are underway, I think will help us to determine what further controls are required in the light of all of that. Uh, and Liz Smith can be assured um, that that will be taken uh, forward. In addition, I can tell her that the guidance that Oscar helped us develop around the use of endowment funds back in 2013. Oscar have signalled their intention that they want to review that guidance because they are concerned about a potential conflict of interest between people sitting on the board and sitting on as trustees of endowment funds. So I can assure Liz Smith that that will absolutely be taken forward with Oscar. Jenny Mara to be followed by Mary Goujon. Jenny Mara. Presiding officer, I am concerned about governance on the board uh, at NHS Tayside. In 2014, board members agreed to suspend the constitution to transfer charitable funds to core expenditure, breaking the trust 
of local people who give so generously. Now, I welcome the decision to pay back the money, but we now need a full review of every board member at NHS Tayside to ensure they have the requisite skills to prevent a breach like this ever happening again. Will the Cabinet Secretary outline a full appraisal and skills review of every board member at NHS Tayside? Cabinet Secretary. Well, I think the, the first thing to say is, for, first of all, I, I welcome the fact that Jenny Mara welcomes the repayment of uh, those funds. I think that was an important early decision made by the new leadership team. Um, I think it's also important, though, to allow Oscar to do the proper investigation. They, and I reiterate, they're doing a full investigation into the endowment fund issue within NHS Tayside. And they will look back to 2014, to the decisions made by the, the trustees and on what basis those decisions were made. So all of that will be looked at. In terms of the wider issue of, of corporate governance and the skills of uh, board members, um, that will be for the new chair and the chief executive to look at whether or not they have the right skill set across their board. And it's right and proper they are given the, the support to do that. On a general point, there is work going on around a review of corporate governance that actually John Brown, the new chair of NHS Tayside, is leading. And there is um, support, additional support being given nationally to non-executive members of boards so that they are able to question and probe and ask the right uh, questions in a way that they have confidence in doing. So I think all of that will help us to uh, strengthen corporate governance. But I uh, reiterate what I've said in previous answers. If there are any recommendations coming out of all of the reviews that are currently ongoing that can further strengthen that governance, then Jenny Mara can be assured that that will be taken forward. Mary Goujon to be followed by Alison Johnson. Thank you. Um, I completely agree with what the Cabinet Secretary said in her statement when she talked about the fact that the maintenance of public confidence in the health service and in the board's leadership is of paramount importance here. So can I ask what assurances the Scottish Government can give that the appropriate measures have been taken to install a suitably high calibre of leadership to restore that public confidence and trust in the board of NHS Tayside uh, to manage the challenges they face going forward? Cabinet Secretary. Well, I'm confident we do have the people with the right skills that are needed by NHS Tayside at this moment in time. John Brown, as I said in my statement, is already uh, chair of Scotland's largest health board and is also a qualified accountant. And I think anybody who knows him, he's also very good at leading change and uh, he will, will um, do that within NHS uh, Tayside. Malcolm Wright is an experienced chief executive who's already been involved in successful transformational change. Um, they've been clear that quality of care is the priority for them, as well as getting back into financial balance. Restoring public confidence and trust is key. And although they've only uh, been in place for a couple of weeks, I think it's fair to say that they have certainly hit the ground running and have been working very closely with the staff side uh, as well as clinicians in order to begin to, to rebuild that confidence. I'm also aware that they offered uh, to, to meet or to, and if not uh, possible, to meet with local members to give them a, a call. And um, I think John Brown and Malcolm Wright were engaged in that over the last few days. Alison Johnson to be followed by Alex Cole Hamilton. Uh, thank you. Um, it's right that we demand complete transparency regarding the financial decisions taken by this board as a situation like this cannot be allowed to happen again. And it's right that a new leadership team takes over. But as Audit Scotland pointed out last year, um, the majority of health boards had to use short-term measures to break even. And I'd like to understand how the Cabinet Secretary is going to address that at root. Is she going to introduce longer-term planning for our IJBs? Is she going to tackle the, the significant use of agency staff that has been reported in NHS Tayside? Thank you. Cabinet Secretary. Um, can I thank Alison Johnson for her question? We are um, addressing the, the use of agency staff and uh, a lot of work has been ongoing to reduce uh, agency staff spend and uh, Fiona McQueen as the Chief Nursing Officer has been leading uh, that work. Uh, Alison Johnson will be aware that additional funding for our, our frontline NHS boards will amount to £354 uh, million, pounds, which is £208 million pounds in real terms. NHS Tayside will see 
£13.7 million of increased investment and a share, of course, of the transformation uh, monies. So more money is going into the health service, but uh, more demands are upon it. And that's why reform also has to take place. And Alison Johnson makes a good point uh, about integrated uh, joint boards. And we have been discussing uh, with uh, boards and councils about ways of being able to enter into longer uh, financial planning beyond obviously the one year that was required because of the budget processing that we've just uh, gone through. Um, also, there is a financial framework that's been developed by the Scottish Government that will look over the five-year horizon, which will be able to not just plan the funding at a national level, but also the shift in the balance of funding so that, that can be visible over the next five years. That will be published in the next few weeks. Alex Crowell Hamilton to be followed by Stuart Stevenson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Professor Connell was asked to resign in response to a, a scandal that had occurred before his tenure. Can I ask the Cabinet Secretary what exactly she expected him to have achieved in the resolution of this situation to her satisfaction? What comfort can she extend to other board chairs concerned that they too may be used as scapegoats to protect this government in the future? And will she rule out today any suggestion of abolishing and merging NHS Tayside with any any other board as proposed by senior backbenchers within her own party. Cabinet Secretary. Well, can I say to Alex Cole Hamilton, I think I said in my statement uh, that and pay tribute to the work that John Connell had done for the last two and a half years, and of course recognise that he wasn't uh, in post when the endowment issue arose in uh, 2014. In fact, that period of time uh, span uh, the previous health minister and my health min uh, my term of office as well but no health ministers I believe could have <laughs> picked up on something that internal and external auditors did not flag but that requires us to look at why those issues were not flagged by either internal or external auditors to the Scottish Government because obviously we rely on these processes in order to be able to do something about it when they are. He, um, he asked specifically about the position of uh, John Connell and can I say it was a, an issue of, of a cumulative set of events. I laid out I think very clearly in my statement all of the issues that had led to the point of the escalation to level five where ministerial intervention uh, was taken where we had reached the end of the road after huge amounts of effort and support being put into NHS Tayside that the only conclusion we could reach was that uh, new leadership was required in NHS Tayside and that required a new chair and a new chief executive to be able to take the organization forward in relation to the merging of boards, Alex Cole Hamilton will be aware that we have been working to uh, get more regional planning, that boards will work across boundaries, but that form should follow function. The important thing here is realising the benefits of regional working and working across board boundaries, rather than fo focusing on organisational change, which frankly would take up the efforts and the, the, the attention of senior leadership teams, whereas in Tayside they need to be focused on getting the board back on track and restoring public confidence. Thank you. There are still five more members wish to get in. In fact, six now. Uh, more members wish to get in. Stuart Stevenson, please make your questions and, and answers quite short. Uh, Stuart Stevenson to be followed by Bill Bowman. Stuart Stevenson. Uh, does the Cabinet Secretary recall that uh, intervening in uh, Grampian NHS led to a very successful outcome on continuous improvement? So does she agree that the moving of the Chief Executive from NHS Grampian to Tayside should provide the reassurance that staff and patients need that this is a serious issue being taken seriously. Cabinet Secretary. Yeah, yes, I would. Uh, and I met with the, the board on the 9th of April, along with the new leadership team. And everything that I've seen and heard of the approach taken to date gives me confidence uh, that NHS Tayside will continue to make the uh, high uh, provision, the provision of high quality services for patients a priority and that's uh, very important that they do that. I think it's also important to say that work has uh, been taken forward in both Glasgow and Grampian to provide assurance that, um, that because of uh, John Brown and Malcolm Wright's focus on Tayside that there will be uh, no uh, impact on the, uh, the work still ongoing in Grampian and Glasgow in taking those boards forward. Bill Bowman to be followed by Ash Denham. Uh, thank you. Regarding the ongoing Grant Thornton review of NHS Tayside, 
Will it or a further forensic investigation fully establish regarding the e-health funds who approved the incorrect entries and most importantly, who both in NHS Tayside and in the Cabinet Secretary's own office knew about this window dressing of the NHS Tayside financial statements for six years? Cabinet Secretary. Well, as I said previously, um, all of the reviews, including the Grant Thornton review, will get to the bottom of all of that uh, and to make sure that there is full uh, openness and transparency about both the issue of, of e-health monies and the issue of endowment money, such as why we've brought that external process uh, to bear, because we want to make sure that that is the case. Uh, and not least, um, if there are areas that we need to change and tighten up on to avoid a situation uh, like that happening again, and of course that is the action that we'll take. Ash Denham. To ask the Scottish Government whether the independent investigation by Oscar will extend to other health boards. Cabinet Secretary. Yes, as I said earlier, the uh, process by which the returns of boards will come to the uh, Scottish Government and indeed Oscar have themselves written to the chairs of the endowment funds uh, asking for uh, those returns. Uh, those will happen by the 30th of April. We hope that Oscar will be able to give an indication of any further issues they wish to uh, look into in more detail by the, the end of May. Uh, and in addition to that, the external uh, audit uh, will have a particular look at endowment funds. Um, I think take all of that taken in the round, particularly the role of Oscar, which is entirely independent of the Scottish Government, should give members assurance that these matters will be looked into fully. Thank you, and apologies to the members that still wish to ask a question, but we've really run out of time and we're already taking substantial times out of the next debate, which we now move on to, which is a debate on motion 11643 in the name of Graham Day on behalf of the Environment, Climate Change and Land Reform Committee. And we'll just take a few moments for the members, or the ministers at least, to change seats.